Hi everybody, it's Kika and I'm sitting in my RV Rhoda and I know you guys have seen videos of Rhoda and for the first time I want to be able to give you an inside tour of her so you can see kind of how she functions, what she's like, especially for those that are considering getting an RV themselves, which I think is a fabulous idea. So I just want to give you a little bit of a tour. So we will start now. So right now I am sitting on the couch watching a little TV. Um, and I do this often. I bring Rhoda home from storage. I have an enclosed storage spot at a public storage for Rhoda and I bring her home. And a lot of people say, why do you have an enclosed storage? Well, in these things like an RV, there can be mice that you can get, insects, all kinds of things. So I really don't care for her to be parked outside just for safety purposes. It's better for her to be inside. We do a pretty good job at cleaning her up before we bring her home or before we bring her back to storage. But um, there could be still some things that could be left in here and then you can get rodents and I don't want that problem at all. So I like the enclosed storage space. It's more comfortable. It is could be a little expensive I probably could find a cheaper um, storage spot but for me it's three hundred and four dollars a month and that's fine I rather have that and know that she's well taken care of plus there's a lot of valuable things that I have left in here um, that I'd like to keep in here and so having her in an enclosed storage really works well for me so anyway I have learned how to drive her surprisingly and I am very good at it but this is the front area and Rhoda is a class C RV. So she's not one of the big class A's. I went for a class C because if I ever broke down on the road, I want to be able to get Rhoda fixed if I need to. And so the front part of her looks exactly like an SUV. And so pretty big in here. Um, so this is the area. And then I have a backup camera that I purchased that I'm going to have put in here and a few other side cameras. And I'm going to have her put up here. I don't know why they have these mirrors in RVs. It's so stupid because when you look in the mirror, you're looking actually into the kitchen. And it's really, it doesn't make any sense. So the mirrors when I'm driving her that I use the most are these side, big side mirrors here. Those are the mirrors that I use the most when I'm driving Rhoda. She has a CD player here. I mean, everything just like a SUV. I actually love it. It's comfortable. Now, I bought these little things too. I put some seat covers on her because it makes it comfortable. But I bought these things for both the seats because um, when you're parked at a campground at night, you can actually cover up this spot with one of those. And then you can actually cover up the door with one of those. So that works out really nice. All right. So... This area is the dinette, and it's really nice. I have a computer that stays in Rhoda, um, where you can go on the internet, edit video, whatever. So it's kind of nice to have a computer. And if you're at a campground that has Wi-Fi, you can hook up to their Wi-Fi. A lot of them have the free Wi-Fi. Um, and then above her is some cabinet space. And I use these cabinets to store um, videos and DVDs and things like that. And then I had my son put this TV in and so this is actually on a swing arm so whoever is up in this top bed bunk here they can actually play video games and watch TV so that is there for them and then those pillows those are my monogram pillow, pillows that I bought and it says Rhoda and then I also have some additional pillows behind there so the people that sleep up here they can use those pillows along with this blanket and then there's a sheet right here as well so they have that and then with the TV I also have a DVD player. So all of this stays inside of Rhoda. All right, so that is kind of how that works. And then I wanna kind of swing around to the other side so you can see the sofa. So that's the actual sofa that you can actually watch TV and have full view of the TV from sitting on the sofa. But this sofa is pretty unique because it turns into an actual bed. And how it turns into a bed, it's a jackknife sofa. So you lift it from the bottom and then you push it from the top and then it lays right down into a bed. So then who's ever in the jack, lays on that jackknife sofa has full view of the TV as well. Now, to lift this sofa up is pretty easy. You just, 
you lift up the bottom, push it back, and then it turns back into a sofa. So it's pretty simple. This area is the front door. I like this front door because you have an actual door and then you have a screen as well. So the screen, when you're at the campground, you can actually open the door and it latches from the outside. And then you have the screen that's on that'll keep the bugs out. But if you needed an extra breeze in here, it's nice to have that screen door. Right above the door is all your controls for your tanks. So this right here is where I, Look at my tanks and check my tanks. This is your gray water, which is your sinks, and it's on E right now. Then your black water, which is your toilet water. It's at two-thirds full. The last time we went camping, we were throwing a lot of toilet paper down there, and it got stuck. So I'm trying to kind of get all of that out, so I put water in the tank. Um, but I'm going to flush it right before I take it back to storage. So right now it's at two-thirds full. And then my fresh water tank is at E. And then my battery's full because I'm plugged in right now to the house. And then this is my LPG tank, which is your liquid propane gas. And that is at, I did say full before, but it's at two thirds. So up here is your generator. And this is how many hours is on the generator. I absolutely hate using the generator, but if you're not pr plugged into um, any electricity or anything, this is really good to use, but it's very, very loud. So what I plan to do is get solar panels so I don't have to use this, but it is a backup and it's nice to have it. All right, so this area here is my kitchen. And this is actually my fridge. I love this fridge. It's not as big, let me move around here. It's not as big as a residential refrigerator, but it will do the trick. So I don't have anything in here right now but wine. Um, but this is the actual refrigerator and it's cold right now because I had it turned it on yesterday and this is my freezer Nice size freezer and then above this freezer This is where you turn it on and then it could be on auto or you can use your gas So it'll pick either one right now. It's on auto. So and it's nice. It's cold and then underneath the fridge is Here and this is where I keep all my pots and pans so that's where all my stuff is. And then you have an extra, you know, fire extinguisher. You need that. You need that in every house, actually. All right, so over here is my kitchen. So this is the actual kitchen sink. I had my son put this in. This is so, so nice. I love this. And then these are just cutting board. It's nice for extra space. Your sink is not as big as a reg residential sink, but it'll do. You do have to wash your dishes in an RV because there's no dishwasher unless you get the big fancy class A and then you'll have a dishwasher. But the problems with the big fancy class A is, in my opinion, is you can't get into the state parks and there's, it's very limited on where you can go with those. And then there's just a lot to them, especially if you're using um, a lot of, um, if you're hooked up to, you know, you're having a dishwasher and you're having all those luxuries that you have in a normal house, then you're going to have probably pay a lot for that um, if they something goes wrong with them or they malfunction. All right. So in here, to me, the important thing was to have a curate because I love my coffee. So I did buy one for here. And then right above it is cabinets. I love the cabinet space in this RV. I like to make sure that I have paper products. So I do have the plastic spoons. I have my paper plates and cups. I have aluminum foil in here. I keep everything in this plastic bin um, just to be on the safe side. And then in here is my stuff for my wine, of course. So I keep all that in here. And then when we're running low, I refill them. So that's always nice to have. Um, for my Keurig right here, there's a nice little plug right here that you can plug it in. So everything's easy and accessible. And then I have extra spoons, ice cream scooper, and all that stuff right here. All right. So over here, this RV does come with a full microwave, which I love. I have my wine glasses in here right now. But I like it because you can pop popcorn at night and whatever you want to microwave instead of using the stove. But if you do need to use the stove, you do have it. So this is your vent hood and you do have a vent that vents to the outside that you open up, especially if you're frying stuff in here. But um, the vent hood works really nice. And then you have a three burner stove. I usually don't use these two back ones just because I don't. I usually use this front one. So I like this front one. It's more room. 
And then what you do to light it is you turn on your propane gas from the outside. You turn the dial here and then you just light it with the lighter. So it's pretty easy. Um, and then you do have an oven, although many people that have RVs do not use their ovens. I probably won't ever use my oven just because when you go camping, I like to barbecue. So why use the oven? But I might store things in there or maybe to keep something warm, I might put it in there. Who knows? Um, I do have in the kitchen my cooler. And when I get to a campsite, I always put this out and in the cooler. I put it outside. I usually keep like cold pops and beers and that kind of stuff in there. And then in here, I have strainers, a toaster. I have the thing to light my um, grill and my stove. So just kind of nice to have those extra things in here. And my cooler stays right here when I'm going down the road. All right. So another thing about this kitchen, which I really like, which is important, is looking at storage so i have this one spot here when you first walk into the rv there's a little cabinet right here and you open it up and you got these little cubbies but i don't know what this will fit and everything will fall out so i don't use this at all not yet anyway so instead what i did for my spices i ordered this thing for 18 dollars online it comes with spices for like five years you get um free spices their spices are okay you might want to put your own in here but you, while you're cooking you just use it and then you just stick it back up here and it's all magnetic and I love this thing it's so cool so I got that and then I like chalkboards in my kitchen just because I might want to leave a note or hang some recipes right here I don't know I just think it's cute it just adds a nice little touch to the kitchen so I have that now from the kitchen there's two sides to your bathroom so this side over here is my actual bathroom where the toilet is so I have towels hanging here that are clean. After every camping trip, I wash them and then I hang them back up. So I always have extra towels just in case whoever's going with me forgets to bring their towels, they have some. So this is the bath and I try to make it as cozy and nice as possible. The toilet's right there. And I'll tell you a little something about that toilet in a little bit. And then I have extra towels and washcloths hanging here. I have where my soap, toothbrush, sink, just a little decorative stuff. I put another different type of mirror here. And then in this cabinet, I put some very important things here. So cough drops, shavers, soap, Tylenol, um, got some band-aids, deodorant, some extra towels, which is very important, or washcloths, and then some extra toothbrushes and toothpaste. So now with an RV bathroom it's a little bit different you can't use residential toilet paper and even with the RV toilet paper if you're using a lot of it and throwing it in the toilet it could get stuck and your propane tank could read at two-thirds full when it's really not and it's just a headache so anyway you do have to get RV safe toilet tissue so I go and buy it and we stick it right up under here and we use it and then every for the toilet this is what it kind of looks like so you have on your RV toilet, you have a flush and a rinse. You always want to make sure there's a little bit of water in the toilet before you use it. Right now the tanks are empty, so I don't have that. But when you use it and you open it, it's just like a little black hole. Nothing too fancy. It's different from a home residential toilet, but you know, it's an RV, so that's what you have. I like this bathroom because there's two sides to it. So this side over here, I had hung a mirror up here because I thought that was pretty nice to have. But when you open this up, this is your shower side. So you can actually open it up and have an entire enclosed bathroom if you want. Um, and I'll show you something else I do with these doors as well. So you have your shower curtain here. You have your shower. You have a skylight in your shower. Um, you have the sprayer here. And then these little cubbies, I usually set like the shampoo, the body wash, all that stuff here. But it, when I'm going down the road, it always falls off. So I have it in a basket down here. And then this basket, I use that to, when everyone's done, they can put their towels in there. And then I wash them and then take the RV back to storage. So I really like it because it's enclosed. It's an enclosed space. It gives you a little bit more room when you need to um, have that room. And then it closes whoever's out in the living room or in the bedroom and then you have your own spot here so i like it a lot so i'm going to close this back and i'm going to show you something else that i do 
So usually, if I'm in the bedroom, this is my back bedroom area. Oh, one thing I forgot. Hold on. There's a fan in here. Right above here. There you go. So that's in the bathroom as well. Okay. Skylight and a fan in the bathroom. So this is my back bedroom. And this is a king queen size bed. Sorry. And so I like it. I always get this little tray because if I have food back here and I just want to relax back here, I have this to set my stuff on. And then there's two windows. There's one on this side and there's one on this side. And then I have cabinets on each side of the bed and above the bed. And then I have it on that side as well. And then just some decorative stuff. I also have a TV over in that corner. So if I want to be back here and watch TV and whoever is camping with me want to be up there and watch TV, their own TV, what I usually do, this is kind of, this is kind of cool. I open this door and shut it. And that way I have my own privacy back here in my room and whoever's up there can be up there and I can be back here. And then on this side, I want to show you there's a light and that's to the shower. And then on this side of my room, I have in the master bedroom, I control all this stuff. So this is actually the light for the bedroom. This controls your heating and cooling right now. It's off. And this is my safe alert that lets me know about carbon monoxide and all of that kind of stuff. And I have a couple of um, carbon monoxide protect detectors in here as well as smoke detectors. And that's about it with this room. There's some drawers on the bottom of these cabinets on each side. So I have that as well. But it's a really cool space. I like it a lot. And then, oh, above the bed, there's also a skylight. So I have that too. All right, so let's go back out here. I think I pretty much showed you everything um, that there is in here. The outside's pretty nice. There's storage all around the RV underneath the bottom. So what I have out there is my grill. I have um, my picnic table and chairs. I have some hoses, freshwater hose, rinse hoses. Um, a little side table so I have all of that so when you get to a campground to set up I usually put out the awning and then set all that stuff out and I have a big rug that goes out so it's pretty pretty nice so I try to make it as comfortable as possible oh also in the evening time and sometimes get a little chilly in here and if you don't want to use all of your liquid propane gas it is probably very wise to have a space heater so I bought one from Target they're all on sale right now since it's summertime so I went and got one and I store it under here and I kind of tie it to the leg of this table. And then I um, use that at night. So, um, and how I use it, I just don't plug it in because I don't want to pull too much power. So I use one of these and I plug it in that way. And up here, I also, this is all my junk. I also have a vacuum cleaner to clean up. Um, and then in here... I have some stuff to line my cabinets, some more paint and all of that stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to do. It's still a work in progress. When I got this thing, it was a clean slate and I was able to add a lot of stuff myself and had a lot of help too, which was really nice. Um, I like it a lot though. Um, right now I'm parked at home in my driveway. I can sit out here to myself, have my privacy, look at TV, um, and it's pretty nice. And then going to a campground... It's really nice because it's not expensive. You can have a different view. You can have a view of the lake, the water, um, a country view, um, the, a wooded view, whatever you want. Sometimes it does cost, although I did find at um, freecamping.net, there are some free spots here in Minnesota, because we have 10,000 lakes, of course, where you can go and camp for 24 hours for free. Also, Walmart does have 24-hour camping for free so if you are out on the road going to another city or a state and you are tired and you need to pull over you can pull over in the walmart parking lot go in get your some food cook and stay there overnight 
Um, so that's nice. Just don't put out your awnings or anything like that, but they definitely are okay with people in their RVs being there overnight. I found, I thought it was going to be a problem with this RV, although I am under 30 feet, so people are usually okay with wherever I go. I'm in my driveway right now, and uh, my association is okay with it as long as I'm in my own driveway. But what I found is even going to restaurants, going to um, a gas station, grocery store, anything like that, if you park like way in the back and then you just walk up to the door of the store, they're fine with it. Um, I usually don't take up a lot of parking space. I'll just park way in the back um, along kind of by the street area back there. And it's fine. It's out of the way and it's fine. And no one really says anything to me. So I like it a lot. I learned how to drive this thing. It's comfortable. Um, I, I think it's cool. So if you're thinking about getting an RV, you have any questions, feel free to inbox me. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. They're really not that expensive if you do your research and especially if you buy it during the off season. So not only did I do my research, I also bought it during the off season. So that way I wouldn't have to pay a lot. And then I did save. So I did pay cash for it because I did not want to have a payment. I mean, this thing is enough. It's like a house on wheels and it's enough of a headache for you. And honestly, if you don't have to, you don't want to have a payment on it because it, it can be a lot of work. So with that being said, I hope you liked the tour and um, thanks for watching.